Hey guys, Mr. here again for another video today, and we are back, and we are back with our uh, next and second uh, NHL 18 franchise mode. So, we will be revealing who won the straw poll I put up in a video uh, like four or five days ago. Uh, actually, a lot of, a lot more votes than I thought it w or there would be, so I'm very happy with that. Thank you guys very much for anyone who voted on that. But uh, the winner of the straw poll with the most votes was the Winnipeg Jets. So obviously by the title of this video, you will be seeing that uh, we are going to be taking the Winnipeg Jets and winning a cup with them, multiple cups with them, I should say. In second place was the Red Wings, Devils, and Kings. So in a couple of weeks, more than likely, I will start the Red Wings series, hopefully. And then tied for last place was the Hurricanes and Blues. So, yeah, we're going to start the Jets off uh, in this episode. And we're going to start very, very soon. Actually, basically right now. Just need to get Mist in here. Mist is back, boys. GM Mist, what a beast he has been for some franchises, just so we all know. So I'm not going to customize the St. Louis Blues. Um... AHL affiliate had to think of it for a second. I did forget what it was, uh, but that should be good. Cap on, CPU trades on, player morale on, and waivers on. And then uh, let's just edit some of the rules and settings really quickly. So in the quick settings, we'll do four out of four. Uh, injuries will be on. We're going to do 10-minute periods. And other than that, I believe everything else is good. All right, advanced settings. Uh, I just want to change the injury return warning to both. Uh, I think that was also it. I'm not going to turn auto rotate goalies off yet. If I do, I'll do it some. I don't know. We'll figure it out when. But uh, let's turn the injury sliders down. I don't know why I went up there. I literally didn't even click up on the D pad. But uh, we're going to turn them down to six, is what we have in our Houston Vikings franchise mode. Hopefully it'll be okay. Hopefully it doesn't lead to too many injuries. If it's not enough, I may turn it up. If it's too much, I'm gonna, I'll am i probably turn it down. So, uh, GM missed, inserted in for the Winnipeg Jets. Now we will be going to the Central Division, and uh, both of our series are in the Central Division, which is pretty interesting, I find. But uh, didn't even didn't plan on doing that or anything. But obviously, our next series will be in the Eastern Conference. I don't want to do all my series in the Western Conference. So that's why, like, when I made the voting for the straw poll, I tried to split it up. So, like, obviously, uh, the Winnipeg, um, Los Angeles, and St. Louis are all in the West. Then the Hurricanes, the Devils, and the Red Wings are all in the East. So it was 3-3, three and three, which was not too bad if uh or if i say so myself so now we're here boys we uh we're here and we are going to be doing the winnipeg jets man i'm excited to do this and one main reason to this series uh or one of the main reasons i really wanted to do this was to see how good patrick line will be which i think it should be very very interesting have a poster of him currently looking right at him right now uh he's literally right beside me so that's always fun but uh you know i'm very excited to see how the standings here works and also the points i think that's such a cool addition it's been so long since this has been in an nhl game and i just think that it is very very interesting and very very cool so i'm happy that that is in there obviously this is really cool our like uh game hub i guess i don't know what to call it but uh, yeah, so we'll see who we're up against next. Advancing a day doesn't take too long. It's a pretty quick sim, so if we need to do that, it should be good. I do want to check these out uh, quite a decent amount because I do want to see how well we are doing. Obviously, we are in a pretty tough central division along with Chicago, uh, Nashville, Minnesota, and probably Dallas. Probably St. Louis as well, really. The odd teams out really could be Colorado and us, to be honest. I mean, the only team that's uh, more than likely will miss the playoffs is Colorado, but really us, the Chicago, Dallas, Minnesota, Nashville, and St. Louis 
are all contenders, which could be very interesting, which could lead to some very interesting things. So really quickly, guys, we're going to go over the draft class in this upcoming season. I don't plan on being bad, so hopefully everything should be good here. Uh, I'm going to talk about a few things. So I did make uh, two created players for this upcoming draft, one of them being named Andrei Svechnikov. He is projected like second uh, overall this year behind Rasmus Dallin. Obviously, you can't see any of his stats, but uh, he's pretty good. He is a medium elite. Also, uh, I'm looking for him. He's not there. Where is he? He is probably projected to go top 10. He's actually, in real life, he's projected to go top 5, top 10. Uh, where is he? Can I, is he just... Did I just not see him? Or am I dumb? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking for him. I Okay. Where is he? He's also a medium elite. Okay, wait, let's sort it by potential, and we'll see if we can find him there. Uh, all right, come on, please, game. All right, where is he? I actually just don't see him. Is he actually just not here? Uh, all right, well, you know, I'm just gonna tell you guys, I added Brady to Chuck into the game. He is projected like top five, top 10 in this uh, upcoming draft. So he looks to be pretty good, but I honestly don't know where he is. I would really like to show you where he is, but uh, I don't think I've gone by him. I haven't seen him. Okay, what if I just sort it by names and we'll see uh, T look through for to Chuck. Cause you know, I'd actually like to find this but or I'd like to find him because he actually is looking pretty good. Like I said, he is a medium elite, so he could be pretty decent. Uh, this draft looks like it could be a very, very good draft with Philip Zdenia, uh, Rasmus Dahlin, Andrei Svechnikov, obviously. Looks to be like a very, very good draft. So let's see, to Chuck, Brady to Chuck. Come on, <laughs> where is he? Is he just not here? Uh, I mean, I know he's in the game. I know I added him. I know I made him. He's... I'm so confused, dude. I really wish... Why Why does something have to go wrong while I'm trying to make these damn episodes? He's just not here. Well, hopefully he gets drafted. I mean, I'm, I'm very confused. I don't know where he is. But other than that, I mean, the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the entire... Uh, I don't know. The entire draft class of 2018 looks to be very good. Free agency, you never know. Yogs, uh, Simone Dupre could always look at them. Now, okay, really quickly, if I sort it by potential... No, all right, so... I was going to say, if I sort it by potential, will uh, any players I actually want be here? But uh, no, what if I... Because I want to see, like, is T'Chuck here? No? I'm so confused. I don't know where T'Chuck is, man. Uh, I really would like to know. Because I know I created him. But uh, we'll have to figure that out um, by the time the draft comes. If he's not in the draft, then I honestly have no idea what happened to him. But uh, other than that, is there anything else I want to look at before we start, the, or before we look at our team? If we look at the trade block... I'm going to take Lemieux off because I don't want to get rid of Lemieux. I do like Lemieux. Uh, well, for the Jets, let's see, actually. If we edit the trade block, um, I mean, I wouldn't mind. Let's see. Like, if we look at our team, Ty Tyler Myers, um, I mean, he's not the greatest defenseman. Two years left, 5.5 isn't too bad. Bufflin, though, 7.6. For four years to be honest he has a shit ton of value and he's still very good but bufflin could be in a few seasons definitely trade bait i don't want to give get rid of bufflin now that's for sure uh maybe like two seasons from now though it definitely wouldn't be a bad move to try and get rid of him um okay so i don't want to look at this team too 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 quick yet so 
I think we'll just go and uh, we'll check out what our team is like. So really, we are listed as champions, which is very interesting. I mean, we do have a very good team, and I find it extremely hard to see us missing the playoffs. But like I said, it depends on, uh, or it all depends on how this team works out. So captains and jerseys, I'm not going to change the captaincy. I do want Blake Wheeler to keep it. I do want Bufflin to be an assistant. I do want Shifley to be an assistant. But by the time Wheeler either gets traded or uh, we leave him to free agency or uh, he retires, Mark Shifley will more than likely get the captaincy, just so you guys all know. So, I mean, where... Uh, I don't know. Where, where do I want to go to look at these? I think we'll go to propose trade, and we'll just sort it by players i'm not actually going to make any trades uh i will talk about one thing in just a second after we are done looking at our teams or at our team so let's go by uh centers we'll sort it by overall so our best center our first line center only 24 years old we have 88 overall mark shifley and <laughs> damn does he ever look good holy frig this is really really good that we have a guy like Shifley not on a bad contract at all uh, I mean 6.125 really isn't that bad it's not a huge number and this will bring him out to 31 so like it's really good obviously over point per game this last season he's had a phenomenal season so Mark Shifley looks pretty good uh, Brian Little as well on our second line we're gonna have to re-sign him to his actual deal this year maybe i mean i could do that he did just get signed in real life but then again i could let him go be interesting he's our second line center uh he doesn't look too bad well he might be our second line center we'll center we'll figure everything out he doesn't look too bad uh another center we have is adam lowry medium top nine 80 overall 24 years old doesn't look too bad third liner all right uh, prospect, kind of prospect. Should I, could I consider him a prospect? Andrew Cop. I mean, I don't really think I could consider him a prospect. He's 23 years old, but uh, a young player in the system of Andrew Cop doesn't look too bad. 76 overall, high bottom six uh, potential, fourth line forward. So you never know; he could turn out for us. Uh, Jack Roslevic uh, looks pretty decent, actually. 74 overall, low top six. 20 years old fourth liner i won't be playing him in the fourth line role this year he is on a entry level deal currently as well so he looks pretty good and mike scarbosa all right medium or medium hl top six 72 overall 25 probably not going to be anything uh chase de leo you never know high hl top six potential usually could be pretty decent but then again it is this is a new game so i don't know how well uh everything is gonna be here or how everything works yet so we'll have to figure that out chase de leo high top six potential interesting i never even heard of him uh jansen harkins 20 years old 65 overall medium top nine has he been signed he has been signed all right so uh hopefully he turns out like he does in nhl 17 and damn here is like the face of the franchise to Houston in uh, in our last series. So, uh, or Houston in uh, NHL 17. So that's pretty cool. Michael Spacek, medium top nine, 63 overall, not too bad. Uh, Jimmy Lodge, 22 years old, medium NHL top six, 63 overall. Uh, Skylar McKenzie. 59 overall, medium bo bottom six. I, I was going to say bottom nine <laughs> for some reason. Uh, 58 overall, Jordy Stallard. Stallard? Stallard. We'll go with Stallard. Uh, 19, medium bottom six. And those are our centers. All right, so the only two that are unsigned are McKenzie and Stallard. Interesting. Now let's go and check left wing. So we've got second liner Matthew Perot. Doesn't look too bad at all. 29 years old. He is on a pretty fair contract. Uh, four years left of it. I mean, it's kind of expensive, but that's not too bad of a deal. I don't mind that. Uh, he's a pretty decent player. He is a second liner, so you know. Uh, Sean 
uh, Matthias, 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 Sean Matthias. Yeah, well, sure, we'll go with Sean Matthias. Uh, 78 overall, not too bad. Let's uh, see, what is his contract like on his last year with us? Potentially 2.125. Isn't that bad? Uh, Matt Hendricks, 36 years old. Kind of just a depth forward there. Uh, Kyle Connor, more than likely uh, a very good prospect to hopefully turn out for us. That would be very, very cool. He was drafted in 2015, so, you know, uh, I mean, that, that 2015 was a good one. Let me tell you, holy frig. Kyle Connor, the low elite, hopefully he could turn out to be decent for us. He is listed as a depth forward, which means probably first-line AHL time. I don't know if I want to give him NHL time yet. He is on his entry-level deal as well with two years left. How many games did he play in the NHL last year? 20. So he hasn't actually been qualified as a rookie yet, which is always good. I always like to see if we can win uh, a Calder with our uh, or with a rookie. Now, Brandon Tanev, medium bottom six, top nine, not the greatest. Uh, Brandon Lemieux doesn't look too bad, 69 overall. Uh, low top nine isn't the greatest. I mean, he I don't know if he'll turn out or not. 69 overall. 21 years old, that would be interesting. Uh, Christian Veselainen, medium top nine forward. Obviously, we just drafted him. He has a fair amount of value. Uh, Kyle Connor looks to have the most value, obviously, for our left wing. So left wings, uh, they don't look too bad, but uh, it's our, yeah, it's it's our right wings where we really, uh, really take advantage. I I would say so. Obviously. Uh, Blake Wheeler, our captain, uh, he is listed as a first liner. I don't know if he'll be playing first line, but we'll figure that out. So yeah, Wheeler only has two years left at five point six million, which isn't a bad contract, but two years left. I don't know. I don't want to lose him to nothing, and then again, I don't want to sign him to a huge contract again. I would really like to retain uh, Blake Wheeler. That's for sure. So. Yeah, first line forward, hopefully he's not, uh, or hopefully he'd be okay if he were to play second line, because these next two players will hopefully be playing first line, one of them by the name of Patrick Laine, and holy shit, look at his shot, he's not very fast, but damn, that shot is actually crazy, medium elite, 19 years old, very, very good, 36 goals in 73 games, I honestly, I truly think he would have beat out Matthews for goals if uh, if he had to play the entire season. But uh, damn, that is crazy. So obviously he'll want a huge contract when the time comes. Hopefully it's not too big, but really, really, really happy we have him. Uh, alongside Nikolai Ehlers who is also listed as a second liner. Actually, line is listed as a first liner, which is interesting. But uh, Ehlers, medium elite, 21 years old. Looks pretty good. Drafted ninth overall in 2014. He is on the last year of his entry-level uh, entry deal, which means he'll probably want a decent amount of money as well. 84 overall, though, is not bad. He's really uh, good all around offensively, which is good. He can play some type of defense as well, but uh, this should be very good. I'm very glad that we have him as well. 64 points to him in the last season. So that's why I really want Ehlers, Line A, and Shifley on a line together, which I think would be very cool, and I think they would produce really good. Obviously, if they don't, we'll switch things up, but that's one, more than likely one of the lines I do want to have or as our first line. So, uh, Joel Armia, a third-line scorer, 79 overall, medium top nine potential. He could probably get up to an 80 overall, which would be nice. Uh, last year of uh, contract for him as well. He's actually getting paid quite a decent amount on that one year. Uh, Marco Dano, medium top nine, 22 years old. Not that bad. He could probably get 81, 82 overall maybe. He's on the last year of his deal as well. All right, then uh, Nick Batan, medium top nine, 76 overall, not too bad either. Last year of his deal, uh, JC Lipon, Lipin, 
I still don't know how to pronounce this guy's last name. Uh, medium bottom six, 24 years old, 72 overall. Not the greatest on the last year of his deal as well. Buddy Robinson, I mean, high AHL top six, 25 years old, 68 overall. That's not great. Uh, last year of his deal. And those are our right wingers. So overall, right wingers, probably the best category we have. But uh, now time for our defensemen. So Dustin Bifuglin, uh, definitely our franchise defenseman, which uh, I'm pretty happy with because he is pretty damn good. I'm uh, not going to lie. Obviously, uh, I cannot believe he was drafted back when there were eight rounds in the NHL. Not even eight rounds in the entry draft anymore, and that's when he was drafted back in 2003. Crazy. So uh, he, he looks pretty decent, to be fair. Dustin Bufflin, man. Uh, 87 overall is very good. Top two defenseman. Very good defensively, obviously. Possibly one of the hardest checkers uh, ever, maybe. You never know. Uh, pretty good offensive category, too. Definitely power play time for him. He's now listed as a top four. So I don't know if they gave him that top four potential or if he's just starting to drop from an elite to a top four, but I kind of feel like he still deserves an elite potential. Uh, overall, his contract isn't too bad. I mean, it is quite pricey, but uh, we'll have to think of something. So next on the defensive category, medium elite Jacob Truba. So we drafted him in 2012. He looks pretty good. I would really like for him to get up to at least an 85 he does have three years left to grow, and he's going to be getting top two ice time. He is listed as a top four, so getting him, giving him that top two ice time could really mean something to his growth. Overall, looks like a pretty solid defenseman. Definitely very good on the defensive side. He can also play the physicality game, which I'm happy with. Sorry, let's go back. Uh, one year left for three million isn't that bad. If we can sign him around that... Uh, again, on a long-term deal, that would be really nice. Now, next, we've got Tyler Myers, also a top four defenseman, 83 overall. Will be playing, uh, well, well, yeah, yeah, he'll for sure be playing on the second pair. Overall stats, not too bad. Uh, kind of looks more of a defensive defense when he can also play the physicality game. Shit, uh, let's go back. Two years out of 5.5. Not the worst contract. It's kind of expensive, but I, I don't, it's not too bad. It, re it really isn't that bad. So he'll more than likely be playing with Josh Morrissey, who is a low elite. Doesn't look too bad, really. 22 years old, 82 overall. If we could get him to like an 83, maybe an 84, that would be really nice. He will be getting top four minutes as well. Overall, he's looking at his stats. He looks pretty good. Literally four-star and everything, so that is pretty good. Drafted him in 2013. He's on the last year of his deal as well. That must be an entry-level deal. So he's probably going to want a, a bit of a raise, which would be interesting. Uh, next up, we've got Toby Enstrom, who will be in our top six. Uh, yeah, he'll probably be on our sixth pair, yeah, for sure. So he doesn't look too bad, to be honest. Uh, that'd be interesting to see how well he does. One year left at 5.75. Wow. So he's actually on a really expensive deal. I'm glad he's not on a long-term deal. But, uh, yeah, so he might not come back. That is an expensive deal. If he wants that much, he will most definitely be not coming back. Uh, I like this more of Ben Chariot. Chari Chariot. Sh Chariot. I don't know how to say it. Please let me know how to say it, man. I honestly have no idea. Um, so he definitely deserves that defensive defenseman tag. He is much more defensive. He can also throw around the body. How well? So Toby Enstrom is the only defenseman that can't really throw around the body that well. That's pretty interesting. But our top six looks very good. Outside of our top six, we've got Dmitry Kulikov, which isn't too bad. What kind of contract to see on? Holy shit. Oh, that's going to be so hard to move. Ew. Oh, that's a disgusting contract. Uh, then we got Julian uh, Melchiori. Uh, last year of his deal. 
medium uh, top or high AHL top two. Sorry, twenty five years old. Uh, Cameron Schilling, sixty eight overall. Jan Kostelik, uh, sixty seven overall. High AHL top two. Top two. Top two. <laughs> uh, Nelson Nogier. Uh, Nogier. Yeah, sure. Uh, all right. High AHL top two. Twenty one years old. Logan Stanley. 19 years old, medium top six on an entry-level deal. Sammy Niku, uh, medium top six defenseman, 20 years old as well. Jacob Cederholm, medium top six, 19 years old. Luke Green, medium seventh defenseman, 19 years old. Uh, Leon Gawank, Gawank, Gawanky, Gawank, Gawanky, I don't know, man. Leon Gawank. I want to say Gawanky. Medium 7th defenseman, 18 years old. So actually, those last, like, five, last six that we named, those actually looked like some pretty potential defensemen. Like, Nogier probably could be decent. Stanley could be decent. Niku could be decent. Cedarholm could be decent. Green and Gawonk. Uh, Gawonk. You know, I'm going to go with Gawonky. Gawonk. Gawonk? Sure, Gawonk. I don't know. Uh, we'll go with Gawonk. Uh, he looks to, like he could be pretty decent as well. So overall, our defensive category isn't too bad. Uh, now, for the goalies, we've got Steve Mason, our starter, more than likely 29 years old. Doesn't look too bad. Hopefully he can have a better year than the past one. Because if he has a 908 save percentage, he will be going. <laughs> Two years on a 4.1 deal isn't that bad. Uh, 85 overall isn't bad either. So, you know what? Overall, I think he could be a good goalie. Hopefully, he sims decent uh, with our... Oh, I would really like to get Hellebuck higher overall because I think Hellebuck really could just could be a better goalie. Uh, but Hellebuck looks pretty good. He's also a starting goalie. Uh, 2.25 in the last year of his deal. We'll have to see how that works out. All right, and then Michael Hutchinson, a backup goalie, 81 overall, uh, 1.15, one year left. Then Eric Comrie, a medium starter. He's our per prospect goalie, 6.50 mil on the last year. So he'll probably want a decent pay check. Uh, probably a high pay raise, which hopefully isn't too much. And also Jamie Phillips, probably will just release him. And those are the five goalies. So overall, realistically, we're going to have to move one. And to be honest, the odd man out, depending on if Hellebuck can grow, and depending on if he doesn't want too much money at the end of the season, I would rather get rid of Mason because obviously... If Hutchinson is starting in the AHL, that's probably not very good. He probably won't be too happy with that because he is a backup goalie. That's what he is listed as. And then Mason, obviously, the star or Mason and Hellebuck both listed as starters. Now I know Hellebuck is 82 overall, but if you look at their stats, their stats are pretty similar for only having a three overall difference. Uh, I would really like to see Hellebuck be a little bit better. Or I'd really like to see if we could get Hellebuck a little bit better. He is 24 years old, medium starter. I'm not saying he'll get to an 89 like he did in my Vancouver series because obviously he was a high starter at that time, but maybe. You never know. And then uh, let's just check one more thing of draft picks. I'm assuming we have a decent amount. How much, or What are our most valuable uh, all right, well, we have draft picks throughout the next couple of seasons, which is good. All right, so uh, 42 out of 50 contracts. We have basically $10 million in cap space. So overall, we look to be in a pretty damn good spot. And like I said, uh, or like the game says as well, we are listed as champions. So, Coach, you cannot help. Thanks, buddy. So our top line will be... Line A, Shifley, and Ehlers. I think Line A should play on the left wing. We'll probably switch into a left wing, maybe. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that just because and they could always take one-timers. <laughs> uh, 
Um, all right, well, second line of Perot, Little, and Wheeler, which isn't bad, but what if I could send Hendricks down? Uh, and then we send Perot to the second line. So what if we did this? We, okay, yeah, so we have Hendricks out of here, and we sign Yager. And then we have a first line of Line, Shifley, Ehlers, then a second line of Yager, Little, and Wheeler. And then our third line of Perot, Lowry, and Dano. And then a fourth line of Armia, Kopp, and Matthias. Or Matthias, I think that would be really good. Defensively, Truba, Bufflin, Myers, uh, Morrissey, Enstrom, and... Sh I don't know. Sh Sh Chirot? I honestly have no idea. Obviously, the goalies, Mason and Hallebuck. Now, if we check the AHL, Comrie is it, the starter in the AHL. So, I don't know, guys. You're going to have to let me know. Actually, one, one sec. Before I do make the outro, uh, I'm going to want Lemieux probably on that top line. Ross Levick. All right, so I think Kyle Connor is in the AHL, I'm assuming. Yeah, he is. So I like to get Spacek in there. I would like to get Niku in there, uh, and I think that is it, really prospect wise. So I'll I'll edit these lines off screen. Uh, actually, maybe not. We'll have to figure that out. So, anyways, guys, that is gonna be it from me. Hopefully, you all did enjoy this one. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you think I should sign Yager. I think that would not be a bad idea at all. Obviously, we could have uh, a second line of Yager, Little, and Wheeler, and that would make our team even better. Probably just sign them to a one-year deal, but uh, overall, I think that would be really, really cool. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully, you all did enjoy. Let me know, like I said, what you think I should do. Uh, for the next episode, but thank you guys so much, and I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye.